see all the smut comes back into your life here on this Wednesday edition of the Luke Kelly Show. It is Wednesday, October the 12th, and the smuttiness, all the sluttiness is back in your life. Why? Because Nora actually read some smut. Finally. Don't ask how I'm uh, coming along with my book. I don't want you to ask me that question because you haven't read. I'm for still like- through chapter nine. Okay, damn it! It takes me a long time to read. You haven't read in like two weeks. Do you even remember what happened? I remember. Oh, sorry. I was trying to break the microphone over there. Yeah, way to go. No, I remember what happened in okay. that book. Uh, basically, right now, as far as I am, is still. Uh, the chick still deciding if she should pursue the guy because, you know, everything that has happened with their family probably wouldn't be a good idea to pursue something with him. And everything needs to re- remain business as usual. She doesn't want to bring love or relationship into the workplace. So that's where I'm at. I remember what's going on. But he's a hot baseball player, so it's hard to resist. I hope he has a good bulge. Well, I hope you highlight. Did, did I show you how to highlight on a Kindle? No. Okay, I'll have to show you how you how you highlight because then it will save it. I hope you highlight. Why? Is there a part where they're talking about the dude's bulge? They usually talk about his bulge. Does that actually turn a woman on? The bulge? To me, I, I don't understand why it would. I mean... I guess if they got a nice bulge, it means they've got something else good going on. Yeah, but what what happens if that's it? What you see is the only thing you you get. You don't get anything else. Like, yes, sure, the man gets erected, but that's as big as it gets. I guess I'm confused what you're trying to explain here. I mean, if the guy has a penis and it's bulging, right, and you see the outline of it, uh huh, and then. When you get in the bedroom, he gets erected. All he really does is get hard. It doesn't get any bigger. Like the size is the size. Yeah. You would be okay with that? You wouldn't want to be like, oh, man, he's a grower. Like that doesn't add to it. So you prefer growers over showers. Because that's what I am. (laughs) I'm speaking from a guy with a lot of experience here, okay? (laughs) I'm not going to be the guy that's walking around the locker room, walking around the mall, sitting in a chair at a mall that has a big, nice bulge going on. I guess I picture, I don't see see like what you're describing to me is like an imprint, like the imprint of, of his dick. Like a bulge is how like a guy's package looks like in boxers or like, or briefs. Like, That's what I, like, when someone says a bulge, like, I picture, like. But I think you have to have a solid (laughs) penis size in order for that to work. I mean, I Because you just be like, oh, yeah, that dude has fantastic (laughs) balls. I mean, nothing wrong with that. That's it. Well, I didn't didn't realize that bowl size was important. I mean, sometimes I wonder, you know, I don't know. I don't don't think a, a bulge. Is that good? Well, I mean, it's not like, I mean, it's not up there. Like we would prefer to see the penis over the bulge, but like. So I you mean, just want men to walk around the street, no clothes on, just penis hanging out? No. Okay. I was going to say, then you need to go move into a nudist colony. I guess like, what if you, what if you were with a girl that had like a really nice ass, but she wouldn't do butt stuff? What's the point of looking at her ass if you don't get to take advantage of it? Guess you could still hit it from the back and see the ass. What if she doesn't like that? What if she has like the perfect ass but only wants missionary and doesn't like her ass smacked and no butt stuff? When you get a Fer- when you get a Ferrari, you want to be able to drive the Ferrari, right? <laughs> That's one just- of those assets. <laughs> Pun intended, yeah. that you would really want. like Exactly. I, I feel like if you're built in that one area, you have to know that's your calling in life. There's a reason why you have that. I'm just saying, like my calling in life, 
Oh, I don't know what my calling in life <laughs> was. The calling? only thing that I think my calling in life could be is talking to people. You got a nice butt. Be- eh, <laughs> it's getting a little saggy, okay? <laughs> getting a little bit older. You gotta starting do those, to do those catcher squats again. I need to do squats again. Make sure when I bend down, I'm going all the way down to the ground, doing the bend and snap. I mean, when we go on our hot girl walks and it's you and Rory, you know, walking ahead of me, I enjoy the view of your no, butt. There's no way. My ass looks so flat in these shorts that I have. It's not like my ass looks any better, but. I, I think we should move on. Okay. I think it's a little well, bit too personal. We're not uh, talking. Well, I don't know if it's this book, which mm-hmm. this um, this book is called Royally Not Ready by Megan Quinn. I have read some of Megan Quinn's books. So going into this book, like her books aren't bad. They're not as spicy as I would like them to be. Like she, like they've got spice to them, but I always feel like you're like almost to like the full potential of what that scene could have been. So like I didn't go into this book like expecting it to be super spicy, but I don't know if it's because I have read 12 straight books in a row with no spice or if this book is just that good. Maybe she read one of your reviews that said, lady, spice it up a little bit more. Hey, it could have. But basically, if you are um, a fan of the Princess Diaries movies, very similar kind of a concept. Um, A girl who grew up not knowing her family was royal finds out that she is the next in line. Um, And if she doesn't choose to take over... um, as the next queen, then when her grandfather passes away, they lose their country and it gets taken over by, um, a, I guess they're a consti- constituent. That's of, a word. Yeah, yeah. Constituent. Um, of a different like monarchy. So she has to go there and she's like in hiding at one of their like old castles for like training for two months. And the person who is training her is the like, private secretary to like the king and he's this um grumpy man and i love it i i'm a big fan of when one of the characters is like a grumpy negative person and the other character is maybe not fully positive but like very sarcastic and very lighthearted i love when it's like the grumpy and like sunshine you can feed off of each other really yes And the banter and the sarcasm back and forth just makes the book go by so much faster. So they're in this castle and their rooms are um, connected by a Jack and Jill bathroom. So, um, and the doors to the bathroom don't work. So there is a lot of uh, sexual tension and frustration. And it took to like, 55% into this book before they did anything. Now I see why you say this lady doesn't have a lot of smut in her books. Now I see why. But it was more like, and it wasn't like it was oblivious. It was more of like she would make comments about being turned on and wanting him, and he kept turning her down because she is royalty and he is not. I was just about to say, if you're someone that isn't of a royal status, you would probably be very nervous. Yeah. To do anything. But he has dedicated his life to the royal family and the country. And so, like, he knows more about the, uh, you know, all the royals ins and outs. Gotcha. Than anyone else. So, when they ha- when he has finally caved and broken down to her, um, and his name is Keller, and why can I never remember the girls' names? I'll remember it in a second. Queen oh, Lily. Elizabeth. Lily. Oh. Keller and Lily. This is Keller's point of view. Now that I've had this taste of her, there's no fucking way I'm leaving. I prop my hands under her butt, angle her up, and I fucking feast. I flatten my thong- my tongue and take a long, drawn-out strokes against her piercing, lapping every last bit of her arousal. She rides against the mattress, her hands clutching into a fist, her breasts arching into the air, her nipples impossibly hard. Turning my tongue into a point, I position it against her clip piercing, making short, quick flicks, loving how responsive she is. Oh my God, my king, please tell me I can come. 
You're free to come whenever you want, I say. I go back down on her, my scruff rubbing against her inner thighs as I suck her clit into my mouth, pulling just hard enough to cause her to cry out. I like the clit piercing. <laughs> I think that adds to it. I think it really does. And Nipples you know, and clit. I tell you, another another thing that I found kind of hot in that scenario that I think would really only play if I were truly royal, because it made me feel a little royal as you were reading that, uh-huh. was like her calling him her king. So he is a dominant. Okay. And that is his sexual pleasure. And she is a submissive. And so his, at one point he tells her, he goes, you may be the future queen, but in the bedroom, I am your king. And that is how you will address me. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. So that is pretty neat. Like, I don't think (laughs) that I would love that talk king because sometimes I don't know. I just don't think it would work for me. But if I were in that position like him, yeah, yes, 100%. Because I would be the type of person that would be like, yes, you're my queen. Like, legit my queen. Oh, yeah. But back behind these doors, I'm king. I'm king of the castle. I'm king of the bedroom. Yeah. And at one point he says, when it comes to this bedroom, you don't tell me what you need because I already know. How many queens have their clip pierced? How many? And she's going to be no, she's going to be the first one in in all of history. She is going to be the first one with her nipples in clip pierced. And and I hope the whole <laughs> world would know about that. That should be something. You know how there's a lot of first for a lot <laughs> of women and men in politics and in personal lives and career oriented thing. That should be listed. First queen Clip, like when she shows up to <laughs> deliver an address, underneath it, it should say clip pierced. First queen to have her clip pierced. You think that would be a good good thing over the people? Um, I think no. it would show how open she is. He, uh, I mean, this book is very interesting. At one point, he is quizzing her over different things like in, in the royal family. And if she gets the answer wrong, she's punished. If she gets it right... She is rewarded. And at one point, he sneaks into her room, steals her vibrator, and uses her vibrator on her. See, this is the other cool part to that. When you're someone in royal, when you're when you're royalty, you could have someone thrown in a dungeon. You could have someone thrown in a jail. And... In those situations, that might be the one time that I would be like, yes, I'm your prisoner. Or you're my prisoner. Dang, I should have had you read this book. This one's good. This one's good. Do you want to read it? I'll keep it so you can read it instead of the baseball one. But just know the baseball one's like 260 pages. This one's like 450. Do you know how long that would take me to read? It would be about a year. Probably a year. Yeah. Matter of fact, I would probably have to go back and read some of it and then <laughs> But no, yeah, that's that's a good book. It is. I uh I had the day off yesterday and I was just reading and um, Do you think that in areas of the country where there's a monarchy, kids are reading these books about their king and queen or wherever the case may be. Do you think they're reading that and saying, man, I wonder how they get down in the bedroom? <laughs> um, because that's what I would think. When I was a kid, you I think always that wondered. about our president? I was always wondering, man, Queen Elizabeth II. I wonder how she was back in her day. Because she was fucking ancient when I was a kid, right? So, R.I.P. to Queen Elizabeth II. Do you, do you look at, like, Joe Biden and wonder, like, Hey, what, I, bet you, his, I bet you, I bet you, Dr. Biden, is? I bet you, Dr. Jill Biden was pretty stellar back in her day. She doesn't look bad now for, you know, being so old. But I, I bet you back in their prime. I bet you back in their prime, yeah. 
So like when you But I don't know how much goes down in the White House these days. So like when when you go to vote because mm-hmm. like elections are coming up. Yep, next month. Are you going no, to No, I'm you're not, not going to base no. you're not going to base There's too much at stake. I oh. know where you're going with that. So you wouldn't base your vote based off of how kinky they are in the bedroom? No, I would not. There's a lot other important things okay. and a lot more impactful things. Oh. It would be cool to be like, yeah, so I like have a female like- president that's really into whips and chains. Like, that would be cool. So, like, how I pick my March Madness based off of, like, how good the coaches are next year. Like, I can't do that for. Right. Not for her oh. actual elections. Okay. In a make-believe world, doing this, totally fine. But when it comes down to it, yeah. Don't waste a vote on that. Don't waste a vote okay. on that. All right. Well. I mean, I, th- I feel like that's how we get into trouble. Well, that makes sense. When things become a popularity vote. Now, if you would have asked me last time about President Trump and his, and his wife, I would say there was absolutely no banging going on whatsoever. Because I don't even think they've been together over the last probably decade. They're probably sleeping around because like his Clintons. wife. Yeah. I, I bet you his wife didn't find him attractive. The only thing she found attractive was the money. Hey. And then he had the money to go and sleep around. So I don't know. I mean, I, I think was it hey, Ivanka it, was is is it, Ivanka's wife's name? She's probably That's the, his daughter. Oh, what was his wife's name? Let's look up. I Melania. Melania. Yeah. I, um, I, she, I don't know, between her and Michelle Obama, top I'm, two for hottest first ladies during my lifetime. I mean, if I wasn't married and I met someone that I wasn't attracted to but was willing to financially support me. You would be a sugar long, baby. Hey, the fact that someone would find me attractive enough to be a sugar baby, I'll take it. But unfortunately, I got freaking morals, and st- and I, I can't, I can't do it. Like, do you really think you know how much I hate my parents for raising me with morals, and that I can't do? Like, I couldn't sell feet pictures or other pictures of me on the internet. I don't to understand make money? why you wouldn't. I mean, I don't think that has anything to do with morals. I don't. I don't think it has anything to do with morals. Well. Then I guess I wasn't raised with enough self confidence to do it. <laughs> you could have been the first person. You could have been that lady that was selling her jar of farts online. Oh, you can sell your feet pictures. Wow. Hey, they got, look they you, looked a little rough lately. I would got, need a few more pedicures in order to get them back up to the, the you standard. Got, you got better feet than I do. I do have some nice feet. Probably one of my best qualities, attributes. Yeah, <laughs> I really would what, say. Is that what you said, like, if someone asked you, like, in an interview setting? Is that what you said during your last interview when they said, what are some of your best attributes? And you were like, I got really nice feet. I said, hey, hold on one second. Let me untie my shoes (laughs) so you could see what these bad boys look like. (laughs) Fresh off of a pedicure. And you you were like, I don't even have, like, clear coat on these things. They are just that good. And I said, hey, if you hire me, I'll let you suck on that baby toe, but only the baby toe, okay? I'm just oh. kidding. That I'm would sure, be a lot of, I'm sure your, your a lot of HR that. red flag sort of things. Totally. Yeah, a joke. I don't know if they would really appreciate that. It's, it's called having a sense of humor. Oh yeah. I'm sorry, but let's move on. Let's move on to a different topic that involves both of us. So I want you to stick around for this, Nora. Oh, okay. Halloween's coming up here in a couple of weeks. Uh huh. We've been in our house for two years. This will be our third Halloween. This will be our third Halloween here. Well, yeah, because we moved in March of 20. Yep. So. So October of 20 was our first. And it was during COVID. And they didn't okay. have trick-or-treating. Right. Last year was our second. Last we, year was our first year having trick-or-treaters. We had. Three. Yeah, three. And I don't think that was kids not coming out. I honestly think in this neighborhood. There's There's not that many kids that are coming by here. And maybe this street is known as the street that doesn't 
pass out good candy and a lot of people don't pass out candy. Because none that's of why our neighbors had their, had their lights on. No. And that's the other thing that bothered me. But when we were walking at Costco a couple weekends ago, I was walking past the candy and I'm like, man, the fun size candy bars are just so expensive. Yeah. They were more expensive than a box of full size candy bars. But yeah, you obviously get but less. But obviously you, you get less, right? It's not the full 100 and however many pieces. pieces. Of candy. Right. Yeah. It's only 20 pieces, but they're all full size candy bars. The point is with only getting three trick or treaters, do you think we should become the house? That passes out the full-size candy bars. Why don't we just go to, like, Dollar Tree and buy, like, the movie theater candy and pass out, like, a whole box of, like... Because it would be cheaper to buy a box of full-size candy bars. Because those are going to be about a dollar a piece. And so is the candy, like, a Dollar Tree, like, the the boxes of, like... That's what I'm saying. Those are about a dollar a piece. Oh. If we get the full-size candy bars from Costco, they were like 13 bucks for like 20-something pieces. Oh. So it would be cheaper to go with a full-size Reese's, Hershey's, Butterfingers, but whatever. Then when we only have three trick-or-treaters and we have like 20 pieces of candy left, you're going to sit there and be like, we have all this candy and I am going to eat it and then I'm going to hate myself for eating it. But it's better than having a whole bunch of little pieces of candy around. That is true, because a little piece of candy, you're like, oh, that's not too bad, and then you'll eat it. Where like a full size, you're like, ooh, a full do size I want candy a full bar. Full size candy bar. You know what we could do with those? We could go into work the next day and get rid of them all. We could do that. Snap of a finger. I know, but I would bring them to work, and then I would like hide them in my desk so no one would take them. I don't mind getting rid of them. I, I so what do you think? Do you think we should become the house? That hands out the full size candy bars. If if that's what you want, well, then. no, no, no. I want your input. Well, just the fact that you like want to pass out candy because like you hate Halloween. Uh huh. Like then I get shows a lot of effort. So I guess we should do that. I don't want to be the person to hand out this fun size candy bars and only get three trick or treaters. Now. If we commit to this, the thing is, I think we have to commit. So if someone around the neighborhood goes, we went to that house last year and they passed out full-size candy bars and that gets around the neighborhood, then (laughs) we're going to be screwed. Like, especially year number two, I think we would be screwed because I wouldn't buy two boxes knowing that the year before we only got three trick-or-treaters. You follow me? Yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't go out to go get more candy. These kids would just be SOL if they showed up to the house. Be like, you should have came earlier. We had full-size candy bars. See, here's the box. Were you like, we have pretzels. See, the third, (laughs) yeah. Do you want want a mini bag of carrots and hummus? (laughs) The third year, I think if we did get a lot, I would still buy two boxes. Okay. I want to... As, as as long as you are okay with financially committing to this. <laughs> if there were trick-or-treating for Christmas, yes, I would do that. I would pass out only good candy canes or good cookies, you know? Well, maybe you should go to, like, the town meetings and see if you can do, like, a Christmas walk and pass out candy. No, I'm okay with that. Okay. I don't want to do that. One time a year. Well, then you could go and be like, well, since we don't get trick-or-treaters on our street, I want to move the trick-or-treating to Christmas and do a Christmas walk on my street. But when you think Christmas, don't you think Christmas cookies? And most of the time, you're not able to do homemade stuff anymore. That's true. So I wouldn't want to do that. So you're saying commit to the full-size candy bars. Yep, we can do that. All right. We'll go to Costco this weekend. Okay. We'll pick out a box. I think... I don't know what we should go with, though. That's going to be the hard part. Oh, it's not like a variety? Well, no, there were variety packs, but it was like Reese's, Hershey's, and I don't know, another candy that is made by Hershey's in a box. Uh And then there was like the Skittles box that was like the regular Skittles, sour Skittles, and tropical Skittles. 
you know. Well, we'll just have to go look. I, personally, to me, I'm going to bypass the Skittles. I, I, I think Skittles are one of the worst candy out there. Okay, well, that's your opinion. I think they're better than candy corn. Well, uh. yes, it doesn't take much to be better <laughs> than candy corn. Honestly, you could dip a turd in chocolate, and it's going to be better. <laughs> candy candy corn, not good. Not they're, good. they're good for decoration. They are. They're good for that. And that's, that's it. it. <laughs> that is it. That Squirrels all. Squirrels won't eat them. Possums won't eat them. Candy corn and circus peanuts. Like like the the elephant ear peanut thingies. The orange ones, is that the one that you're yeah. referring to? I don't know why they sell those. But you also don't understand why people like peeps either. Peeps are fucking disgusting. <laughs> well, if 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 you had what would you choose to eat? Candy corn or peeps? Candy corn. Peeps for me. No. <laughs> I absolutely hate the taste of peeps. I gag. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever tried a peep. I felt like I was going to puke. The mushiness and the sweetness that hits your lips, it's sugar on sugar. And it's not good. Like I can think of I like I feel, I remember it was a purple peep. I broke off one of those. Shoved it into my mouth. And I just remember purple drool coming out of my mouth because it was so (laughs) disgusting. This is when I wish we had like a video podcast because the way you look describing this is like you're sitting in like a dark room, like being interrogated from the police station and you're just explaining. You're like, it was a cold, it was like a cold April night and this is what was served to me. And you're like, I was wearing this. And you can just like describe it. That It just seems like you're being interrogated and you're just describe. You're like ex- explaining your alibi. I always got them in my Easter basket from my grandma. <laughs> and now you have to understand the way that my grandma made our Easter baskets. Because we had such a large family, She did not do individual Easter baskets. She did family baskets. Let me tell you what. I don't know how in the hell she found an Easter basket this big (laughs) because it was about the size of a bathtub, okay? (laughs) And there would be every single piece of candy that you could imagine in there. And I'm talking about Reese's, Hershey bars, 100 Grands, Skittles, Starburst. When I'm saying everything, there was a little bit of everything in there. She would also put a couple packages of Peeps in there. One of my brothers, big fan of Peeps. So he was the one that usually went ahead. Mark, he likes Peeps. Okay. He would be the one that usually would take them. Me, on the other hand, like I I told you, I described it perfectly (laughs) having my first Peep. (laughs) And it was nothing (laughs) that I would ever try again. I swore it off. I never in my life would peer pressure someone to eat a peep. You truly despise them. They're disgusting. When I I am not lying when I say I would rather drink toilet water. So you're telling me, I hope if I have a future kidnapper, I hope they're not listening because then they'll just probably tell you, you have to eat 10 peeps to rescue me. And you'd be like, well, what she happened? Was, I would say, she, you'd be like, well, she was a good first wife. Guess we'll find another one. I would say, does it count if I throw them up? That's what I would ask first <laughs> because I would attempt it. But if they say, listen, you can't puke, I'm sorry, Nora. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. I'm going to puke. I was, I was a good first wife. Hey, better luck next time. I hope your next one like smut so you can continue with smut tales. Man, I, I honestly think that I would ask the the kidnapper. I'd be like, hey, can you keep her alive? And I could reach out to her on uh, Tuesday night, say around like 7 o'clock. Still need her to do a little uh, <laughs> podcast thing. I'm you surprised okay with you that? weren't like, can I phone a friend and have someone else eat the peeps? Uh, if that were an option, I would ask. 
But I mean, I, I don't know. I and I know they make peeps for other holidays now. I hope they don't make them for Halloween. Ooh, I should get you some Halloween peeps. No, now the pumpkin Reese's those are next level. Those are good. I, I feel like specialty candy for holidays, Christmas, Halloween, like Easter jelly beans. Those are yes. I, I feel like those are fantastic. They are. The, the Reese's shaped like trees, really good. Shaped like pumpkins, really good. I just feel like there's I don't think more. I've never had a Reese's pumpkin. No. But you I, have got to be kidding me. You've had to have one. No, because I've never really been a fan of Reese's. Oh, Nora. I'm not a big candy person. But the fact that you are not a big Reese's person hurts my hurts Get my little him. fat kid heart. Can we cue Izzy on um, Friday night when she, if I know that I've never had like a Reese's pumpkin, we were at your brother's football game and your niece turns around and says, you were born in America and you don't understand football. I feel like that would be her to be like, you were born in America and you've never had a Reese's pumpkin. She's got a point. She's got a point. Just saying. I got attacked on Friday things. for not understanding football. Because you were a cheerleader. They don't teach you the concepts of football and cheerleading, though. They just teach you how to cheer. The cheerleaders in The Replacements, I know, is a movie that you've never seen before. But the cheerleaders in The Replacements, <clears throat> they knew about football. Oh. The one main cheerleader really knew everything. But I just thought it was funny that your niece turns around and she's like, you were born in America and you don't understand right. football. Right, that would be like being from London and don't understand soccer. Oh. I understand soccer more than I think I do football. Well, maybe maybe you're a Brit or something. Maybe. I well, don't know. Wow. So we're going to be the house that has full-size candy bars. There you go, breaking news. We'll let you know what variety pack we go with. It's going to be the Reese's, Starburst. Skittles, what was the other one? Uh, Snickers and like Milky Ways and other things. But we're going to be the full-size candy bar house. I'm kind of excited that uh, we're going to be doing that. If we have more than three trick-or-treaters, hopefully we don't have more than like 26 (laughs) trick-or-treaters because then we're really SOL. But uh, we'll let you know what we choose on Monday's episode. I'll talk to you about that. Also, get a top three because I failed to do a top three on Monday. I was just gibbering and jabbering and didn't realize about 30 minutes into the podcast that I didn't do one. I'm like, I'm not going to drag it out. I don't even know what I would do it on. So uh, we'll have all that stuff to talk to you about on Monday. Have a great weekend, and thank you so much for showing up today. We'll talk to you later on The Luke Kelly Show.